video games being incredibly popular, news about them rarely crosses over into the mainstream press. OK, you might have a AAA blockbuster release or a big eSports tournament, but tabloid headlines are far more frequent, and their opinion of gaming is less than favourable. Earlier this year, the World Health Organization added gaming disorders to its list of pre-established mental health conditions, so it's hardly surprising that parents out there are concerned about the effect that gaming is having on their loved ones. We thought we'd cut through this potential fake news and bring you the real story behind the headlines. As a gamer, the way that my passion is portrayed in the media can be very frustrating. It annoys me the way mainstream media can sometimes cover gaming because it can really distort how parents look at it especially. So they may end up not allowing their children to buy specific games when ultimately they aren't really harmful. You're never really going to see a big huge front page story about how the latest gaming is helping people who might have mental health problems for example. If people don't understand something it's very common and that people will be scared of it. Well, we'll sell papers are sadly what we have come to see in recent years are the, the terrible stories about gaming, the ones that are blown way out of proportion, the ones that claim that games cause violence, the ones that claim that people are addicted to gaming. It's no wonder people are like afraid of it and thinking that it's ruining our children and stuff. As gamers, I think we tend to sometimes get a little bit defensive and circle the wagons in a way when gaming is covered in mainstream media, usually for good reason. But I think in the case of the WHO classification, I think that we really need to stop and take stock of where we're at now with games because Games have evolved so much in such a short space of time. A full-scale battle has been joined between the video game industry and its opponents. Sensational headlines and nothing new. For as long as video games have been popular, they've attracted controversy. Back in the 70s, Atari was criticised for a game called Gotcha, where you had controllers, shaped like breasts. In the 80s, Custer's Revenge encouraged players to commit sexual assault, while games like Chiller were banned because of their extreme violence. The 90s saw enforceable age ratings introduced for the first time ever. It was after politicians in the US investigated the effect of in-game violence. Night Trap and Mortal Kombat being two of the examples that they talked about. More recently, famous franchises like Grand Theft Auto and Call of Duty have been criticised. COD especially for Modern Warfare 2's no Russian level where the player actively took part in a terrorist attack. US President Donald Trump recently claimed that violent video games are shaping young people's thoughts, despite having no evidence to back up his claims. You could call it fake news. The demonization of popular culture is nothing new, from Elvis shaking his hips on television to social media use in teens and young adults Technology has always driven controversy. But these days, film, music and television have all settled into cultural acceptance. So just what is it about video games that generates all this attention? Our work here kind of focuses on what you could call kind of big data social research. So uh, we analyze very large populations of young people and adults and we follow them over time. Kind of the goal is to kind of figure out, you know, what is healthy screen time, what's unhealthy screen time, and then what leads some people to kind of get kind of a bit too obsessive uh, about uh, technology and games, and what leads people to use them uh, in a way that's kind of empowering. So what exactly has the World Health Organization said? Have they called gaming an addiction? No, I think they've been really careful not to. What they've said is that there might be something called gaming disorder. It's kind of a more amorphous kind of set of possible symptoms that would classify it, where basically gaming takes over their lives. It's all they can think about about other things drop away, like school, uh, friendships, hobbies. It's a detriment to their normal life. Is that sort of the, the, the difference between sort of passion and a disorder, effectively? That's kind of the line in the sand that they're drawing. But the problem is, is that really video games don't work this way. You know, we can get very passionate about a new game and we can play it all weekend or for two or three weeks, like binge play, like the way we'd maybe watch a new series on Netflix. But then we kind of stop, we pick up something else. Personally, I wouldn't say that I've been addicted to any games. My school work, my university work, my work work never suffered because I would be playing a video game too much. That being said, I do play them a lot. 
But for me, that's just instead of watching TV or endlessly scrolling Twitter or Facebook or something. I was one of those guys back in 2013 that got addicted to Candy Crush. I had an Xbox One at home and a Wii U, weren't touching them. I was playing Candy Crush. I was that guy on Facebook that was sending requests for extra lives. That was me, so I could progress. You either part with your cash or you help get your friends addicted to the same game. It was like some sort of virus that you would spread about. I believe, well and truly, that I was addicted to World of Warcraft. There's no other word that I can think of that would better describe what I went through. I had dropped down from full time to one day a week, and then I would often call in sick just for that day so I could play World of Warcraft. Wow. Essentially, it became a point where I wasn't working because I was playing World of Warcraft. I mean, how did your family and your girlfriend kind of react to it? We used to have awful fights and rows over it. My mum was really upset. She used to shout at me all the time about it. And of course, you know, my girlfriend, who would come home from work and see me playing World of Warcraft, was getting increasingly frustrated because I was I had essentially checked out of, of, of all of that. So what was the turning point? What got you to stop playing? It was an ultimatum. My, uh, my girlfriend, I do remember like a sort of final straw argument where it was, you know, this or me. Wow. Um, and, you know, I put her through the ringer with that game and I shouldn't have never got to that point. And I do feel terrible about it now. With anything that you can be addicted to, you have to kind of be proactive in monitoring your own habits. All the main consoles, so Xbox One, PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch, they have inbuilt systems like time limiters and parental controls that means that you can restrict how long your kids are spending playing video games. You can control what your kids are doing via an app. You don't even need to take the console off them. Don't get all of your opinions from tabloids. That's a terrible idea. Video games are the most exciting and engaging form of entertainment in the world today, giving us joy and experiences unlike any other entertainment medium. People need to understand how games work and why people love to play them, the positive effects that they can have on the world and also the potential pitfalls, because then we can all start to make more informed choices about what games we choose to play and how we choose to spend our free time. Leaving games to enrich our lives instead of becoming our whole life.